Hello, everyone. She drove four hours straight from school to her institution, far from home. She returned for a weekend with a few friends in her second year on the spur of the moment to surprise her parents. An enduring memory was made during the weekend due to the abundance of happiness and mirth it contained. Her mom offered to drop her off at a friend's house so they could make the drive back to campus together when it was time to leave. Her mother acted somewhat strangely as they bid their goodbyes. The farewells were more heartfelt and drawn out than normal, and she was adamant that she sit in the rear seat. On a rainy, foreboding evening, around 2.5 hours into their return journey, their course took a disastrous detour. A flooded road met them as they descended a slope. Another car was coming down the slope when they skidded out of control and into oncoming traffic. All she can remember is the screams of her apartment mates in the vehicle. She was startled awake by the noise after dozing off in the rear seat. But from that moment on, she can't remember anything. A few of particularly memorable events from the aftermath of the accident have stuck with her ever since. In her recollection, upon opening her eyes she beheld a woman reassuring her that she would be okay. At that time, she experienced an overwhelming feeling of terror. Being outside of her body is the next thing she remembers. At that point, the fire department and ambulance had already come, and she was engrossed in the sight, as if it were a movie. She stood on a pedestal, watching with great interest and concern for the people concerned. As she went to see her roommate, the driver, she also discovered her own lifeless body on a bed inside the ambulance. As a signal that they had to leave, the paramedics taped the back. She rose from her seat in the ambulance and looked around the interior, symbolically. On the left side of the room, she could make out her tangible self, covered in sheets and cloths, her head cut off. There was a subtle, brilliant light emanating from her. For some reason, she didn't feel like a corporeal being at all. She had a difficult time seeing herself as a material being. Near the top of the ambulance, she had the sensation of floating. The nurse's demeanor and the exchange between the two men in the front of the ambulance are among the aspects that she remembers clearly. They found out afterwards that her roommate had fractured his back and leg, so he was moaning in agony. Because of her unconsciousness and heavy bleeding, the ambulance drivers argued over whether to drive in the center of the road to avoid disturbing the wounded or to drive more gently. With an astounding calmness, free of worry or fear, she watched the whole thing play out. Watching the world go by was her only source of solace. When she re-entered her body, she remembers it clearly. The nurse sought out the name of her roommate while riding in the ambulance's rear. While her roommate spelled it L-E-E, -E, her last name was L-E-A. The idea that they wouldn't be able to find her parents caused her to panic, and she remembers it clearly. Regaining consciousness, she informed the nurse, it's L-E-A, and they live in Takapuna. The nurse's look of shock was unforgettable. The part of her story where she talked to her mom was also really interesting. Her mom said she felt really uneasy in the hours leading up to the accident, but she couldn't put her finger on why. Everything fell into place for her at that moment. The 1 o'clock a.m. phone call that informed them of the disaster. She came to the realization that her vision had foreshadowed the disturbing occurrences that lay ahead. It was the kind of feeling a mother would have before anything bad happened. A sense of premonition. After that, she stepped out of her body again, this time to see the entire trip unfold from the ambulance. The accident location was quite a distance from the hospital where they were headed. Along the way, she had bled profusely and sustained a serious brain injury. Surgeons met in the emergency room of the hospital to discuss what to do next. She was bleeding profusely because some of her brain's veins and arteries were obstinate. It should be mentioned that this was not a famous hospital, but rather a local one. At a turning point, she felt an irresistible pull to return to her physical form, as if a voice from within was urging her to do so. As she came back to her physical form, 
She vividly remembered the last feeling of relief and assurance that everything would be okay. The seriousness of her wounds became apparent when she got home. She lost the ability to remember things in the short and medium terms due to her brain injury. Back then, people dealt with brain injuries in quite different ways than they do now. At the youthful age of 19, her rehabilitation program was quite simple, consisting of weekly doctor's appointments, memory tests with playing cards, and praise for days when her memory was spot on. In most cases, the doctor would tell the patient to relax and come back a week later. This was the last step in her recovery process. Everyday things, like where she put her shoes, would sometimes slip her mind, leaving her confused and baffled. Consequently, she moved back in with her parents and had to drop out of university. All of her memories of her academic endeavors wiped clean. It looked like her hopes, ambitions, and professional future were permanently dashed, and life in general seemed dreary. Still, she made up her mind a few months later to take charge of her recovery. She was sick and tired of letting that tragic catastrophe define her life story, and she was determined to do something about it. Taking charge of her own healing, she underwent a miraculous turnaround over the course of two years. Her recollection now served as evidence of her perseverance and hard work. Throughout this challenging two-year journey, she discovered something quite remarkable the incredible impact that one's attitude and perspective can have on their life and the results they achieve. When directed with focus and resolve, the human mind is an unstoppable ally. That much is certain. It turns out there are a lot more options in life than you might think. Her deepest gratitude goes out to the wisdom she gained during this pivotal time. Her understanding of human behavior, memory, and the brain's complexities grew substantially. A tremendous sense of peace and an unshakable faith in the existence of something beyond human understanding were offered by her out-of-body experience, which supported her on her journey. Her present company is built on the principles she learned during her recuperation and which she now shares with others. This was only one of several turning points in her life. Her parents' untimely deaths six weeks apart and her best friend's suicide are just two of the other tragic events she has had to cope with. Despite these enormous obstacles, she perseveres by tapping into the reservoir of knowledge she accumulated during her recovery from the car crash and her subsequent path of self-discovery. She has a great understanding of the human condition and an unshakable sense of self-confidence as a result of these transformative experiences. Sharing the wisdom she has gained on her journey is something she is deeply committed to doing. She interacts with a large number of people every year and has observed that many of them are weighed down by anxiety in many areas of life. Shifting this viewpoint is central to her mission. She thinks that life should be enjoyed to the utmost, cherished, and filled with experiences that help one grow as a person. Her goal in life is to inspire others to take these teachings to heart, face their anxieties, and live life to the fullest. She firmly believes in the transformative power of connecting with others via shared experiences. She hopes to make a difference in her community through working together. She plans to take her channel in a thrilling new direction, sharing near-death experiences from all around the world. YouTube Membership Scheme will be introduced to achieve this goal. Their channel's survival depends on the support of their audience. Live queue and accessions, giveaways, events, and unique content without ads are available to members. Most importantly, their backing is critical to further the goal of discovering and sharing these life-altering events with people all across the world. The devoted viewers and supporters have their deepest gratitude. Your contributions have the power to create a significant difference leading to the establishment of a strong and united community. Everyone who is a part of this shared experience has our deepest gratitude. When we're staring hopelessly at the ceiling with love in our eyes, we all fall in. As soon as love blossoms, we all fall in love.